Final session of the day, day two of Road to L&D um, 2023. It's been great so far. Sarah um, had quite a lot of information in that in, in that last session. And I also saw that the tables were still populated. Kara was um, and still had a full full house there on her table. So uh, that's that's also really wonderful to see. And now for the final event of the day, we're going to be talking with Dr. Kuva Jacobs about busting learning myths, which as you remember in the last session, I was saying it was really important um, for everybody to try to attend this one or watch the recording of this one. And I'm so glad that Heidi Kirby um, recommended Kuva for our event. Um, let me give you a little bit of information about Dr. Kuva Jacobs. Um, Dr. Kuva Jacobs is a learning design strategist, instructional designer, and the founding director of Redpoint Consulting. Um, her passion for learning design seeded from a PhD in mathematics. Um, when she created visual interactive flash-based modules that brought complex mathematical equations to life. Kuva's focus is on improving the experience of the learner through interactivity, engagement, and creative use of multimedia. She creates highly technical training materials right from the analysis phase through to design and delivery. Um, and this is something from Kuva. Um, I've been a learning designer for longer than I care to admit. Recently, Heidi Kirby and I started a group on LinkedIn and many L&D people have joined determined to fight the tide of popularist mis misinformation. So it sounds to me like Kuva is perfect for this event because we're trying to do the same thing here at TLDC. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and hide myself from the stage and um, let you take it away. Okay, Kuva? Thank you, Lewis. Thank you. First of all, thank you so much for inviting me to talk. And secondly, thanks for the lovely intro as well. Really appreciate it. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, thanks. Thanks for joining. Um, great to see everyone here. Uh, so I've got a little bit of a different session. I like to do things differently when I'm speaking. Um, today, what I'm going to be doing is, uh, is actually... Um, Jumping, getting everyone to jump into Miro. Has have people used Miro before? Can you give me a little reaction? Um, so I'm gonna just drop the link to the Miro board in the chat, and I would like to see everyone move across. Sure. All right, that's an interesting one. Someone's speaking into my heart here. There are people who will never learn math. Um, so I can definitely talk, talk to that one a little bit. Um, during my PhD, I had to research mathematics and learning mathematics. And um, what I discovered is that people do have math anxiety. Um, and it's an, interesting, um, it's an interesting phenomenon because one of the things about maths is that it has a very specific right or wrong. So... You either are, when you when you do a math problem, there is one answer, and um, a lot of people, especially like if you've got perfectionist tendencies, um, it's quite intimidating that you might do this problem and then you might actually get it wrong. So there's a little bit of fear of failure in there. Um, and then the second thing that stops people as well is the fact that it's often quite abstract. So um, one of the ways that we can reduce that is um, by providing um, more concrete instructions. So going back to constructivist principles, um, using visuals so that they can actually visualize the maths. Um, yeah, that that's a really, uh, really a couple of really great ways that you can help people with their mathematics anxiety because it is a thing. Um, Tests are a good way to measure progress. Yeah, it's, it's a tricky one as well. So um, I, I guess uh, one of the things is that we do want to measure in some way. So um, we need to look at what is the best way. And for me, um, I think as someone who's developing learning within a corporate context, um, what I find is that the best way to measure is by getting them to do as close to what they need to do in their job. So um, if, if, for example, you know, their job is that they need to complete 
something in a software system, uh, you know, building an e-learning where the assessment is reflecting that job-specific role to me is, is the best way to measure their progress because then after that you can say, um, yes, that is uh, that they are actually able to do that job. Um, one of the ways that I like to build around this when I'm building learning is um, by building an e-learn that instead of having a quiz at the end, um, what we actually do is um, is build a uh, build the quiz to be um, build the questions throughout the e-learning. So, for example, give them you know a little bit of information, and then give them a scenario that tests on that information. And I've actually built e-learns where the entire thing is centered around questions that reflect what they would need to answer if they were doing that. Um, so, for example, uh, with a like a financial process, what are the things that they're looking for when they're doing that process and then getting them to answer the questions as they go. Oh, it's really great to see you guys jumping in and um, you putting all these different answers in. Learning is harder as you get older. Um, so this is an interesting one as well. <laughs> I can tell you a personal story about this. Um, everyone seems to say that children learn languages really fast. <laughs> so uh, when we dropped our two young, beautiful children into a school in France um, and they were not yet able to learn French, we thought that after a month that they would be pretty good at speaking it. But honestly, like, they, they did really, really struggle with it. So, yeah, learning is hard at all ages, I think. Um, and But as we get older, um, one of the things that's interesting is that we actually get better at coping with ambiguity and better at dealing with abstraction. So there's going to be some things that we will learn better um, and then other things that um, are going to be more challenging for us as well, of course. Um, I think obviously part of learning as well is about how motivated you are to learn. So as you get older, um, you want to see the relevance of the learning that you're doing um, to your particular context. It is impossible to learn something from scratch. People usually learn topics related to what they know. Um, well, it's not impossible to learn something from scratch, of course, but it definitely helps if we can connect the learning firstly to something that they're intrinsically motivated by um, and secondly, something that uh, they um, that they already know. So if you take a language, for example, if you are, you know, if you already know, English and then you try to learn um, a Latin language, it's going to be much, much easier than if you were going to take a, a language that was entirely unrelated to English. It takes 10,000 hours of practice to master something. Yeah, this is a really interesting one. Um, so, yeah, hours of practice, obviously it depends on what the thing is and how complicated it is. So, uh, you know, taking 10,000 hours is an arbitrary number um, when you think about it. So, yeah, if you're trying to learn, for example, how to do a Rubik's Cube, it might, you know, you might be able to master solving a Rubik's Cube within a couple of days, for example. But if your goal, your mastery goal was set to being the fastest Rubik's Cube solver in the world, then it would take a lot longer. So that's calling two things into question. First of all, how complex is the thing that you're learning? And secondly, um, 
what is the level of mastery that you're trying to achieve as well Uh, because that's obviously different. Really, really great things here. Can you see anything, Lewis, that you would like to call out? Uh, I'm not seeing anything in particular. I'm seeing lots of movement. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, everyone's um, just dropped their answers into the pyramid over here. So. Yeah, yeah. No, this is great. It's I, I love the interactivity that you're um, that that you're applying to all of this. Um, awesome! Thank you so much, everyone, for um, participating, and uh, really appreciate everyone dropping their thoughts in here. Um, I'm going to move to the next question that I have for you guys, um, which is about learning myths. So one of the things that we found um, as we started our learning myths group is that busting learning myths is not necessarily um, a straightforward topic because, uh, first of all, if someone has had a particular belief um, for a long time and then you try to deconstruct that belief based on what you know is scientifically valid it doesn't necessarily always translate to them listening to you and um, deciding that uh, that they that your argument is correct Um, and they may also become quite defensive as well so the question I have for you is how should we bust learning myths So you've come across a person, they said something that you believe is incorrect. Um, What are you going to say back to them? Or maybe they posted it on LinkedIn. Um, Maybe this person's your boss and they're speaking at a company-wide event about a learning myth and you know it's incorrect. There's going to be many contexts where you do actually come across people who um, will will believe something like learning styles. Um, I know that I personally have promoted um, models that have been demonstrated to be myths, um, and not everyone is willing and able to uh, reflect and grow when when you call that out. Oh, this is so. This is really nice. Sharing a personal story to show that it's not so, rather than quoting statistics. So I think that can work really well for you know some of those um, statistical models. Like for example, with learning styles, um, the example of driving in the car and listening to the podcast. Um, even though you know when I'm at work, I'd much rather see a picture. Um, so I think that's a really great way. Um, to to make it a little bit more personalised. Ask them questions and share them. Yeah, so sharing resources I think is a really great way as well. Um, if you can, if they're willing and open, um, pointing them to those resources so that they can, you know, do their own exploration as well. That way if they're open to it, then that's great. Um, And if they're not, then you haven't, you've just pointed them to a reference. Um, I'm seeing a lot of asking questions and I think that's really important as well. Um, So, you know, as you ask questions, exploring their context um, so that you can then go in with the right approach. Some more about 
it to see why yeah so understanding why they believe that particular learning style uh sorry learning model um is really a good way to explore their context rather than try to explain share the facts in a hey this is a cool thing that i've found what do you think um yeah i think that's a really good idea as well um just you know getting their perspective on um, a, a different point of view, I think can be really helpful. Um, the one thing that I'll call out as well is um, what I've seen uh, recently is as, as we gather a bunch of myth busters, uh, people who are willing to step up and speak out, is that sometimes when people are on social media, we forget that there's actually a person behind the poster so that person who did post the Dale's um, pyramid, um, they, yes, they may be getting a lot of likes from people who don't know about this particular pyramid, but we also have to be really careful about the fact that that's a human who's posted that. And so um, we need to make sure that we don't attack that person or um, you know damage their reputation on one hand, you need to making sure that people understand that something is a myth is great. Um, on the flip side, it doesn't need to be done in an, an impolite way. Um, and sometimes I think we we may get a little bit too uh, uh, what's the word um, <laughs> passionate about. <laughs> making what's right um, and that may be detrimental to somebody so always keeping in mind that um, there are other people out there as well get them to create a way to test their beliefs um, yeah that's that's also really important as well awesome um, thanks guys Thank, thank you to everyone who's jumped in and who's, um, you know, put, put their comments, put their thoughts, um, joined in the conversation. I really appreciate that. Um, and I appreciate the fact that everybody's, you know, coming in and sharing their own perspectives because for me this is a topic that it, it's not about one person's perspective. It's about all of us. It's about being collective in our knowledge as well. So this comes to our closing circle. Um, so I would love to hear um, what you learned today, if you guys learned something. Um, and I've also put a couple of links to where you can learn a little bit more. So um, Heidi Kirby, who Lewis mentioned earlier, um, invited me to her podcast uh, last year. Um, and uh, we did a block uh, block. Mythbuster podcast. You can see the link here. Um, and uh, secondly, we've also got a Learning Mythbusters LinkedIn group, um, which I'll encourage all of you to join us um, on that group. Um, and yeah, feel free to reach out to me as well if you've got any other questions, um, or you know, feel free to join me on LinkedIn as well. Okay, let's see if we've got any questions here. Um, we've got a few thank yous. Miro is an awesome platform. I enjoy it too. I've actually been yeah, using um, one that's a little different. Um, I can't remember what it's called now. It skips. Um, Miro? Anyway. Um, yes, Miro. Yes, I've been using yeah. Miro. Uh, do, 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 do. Let's see. Any other questions? It's him just saying thank you. Yeah, and everybody, you know, if you haven't played with Miro before, um, you know, you can you can actually uh, sign up for a free account, and you get you know sort of limited access to it. But it is really a wonderful um, a wonderful tool tool to use. And then, like we mentioned earlier, there is also one called Mural, which is M U R A L dot C O. And then interestingly enough, I know that Apple in their latest version 
um, their latest operating system, they added something called um, Flow, which is uh, actually kind of a collaborative whiteboard type of tool too. So that's actually built into the uh, the Mac OS now uh, for the newer versions. Oh, cool. Nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay. I am not seeing any, uh, any other questions in there. I'm definitely going to join that LinkedIn group. I'm very interested to see that one. And then of course, tomorrow we have Heidi Kirby opening up uh, the event. Heidi, who actually helped me put this event together last year, but tomorrow um, Heidi's going to be starting with creating performance-based learning objectives. And then after that, we have three more sessions uh, for you to enjoy on uh, a nice Friday. So um, yeah, if that's it, I'm not seeing any questions. Otherwise, I'll go ahead and, um, and wrap it up. Kuva, thank you so much for doing this. I know... Um, you know, you are all the way over in, it was Australia, right? Uh, yes, that's right. It's eight o'clock in the morning for me. So. Yeah, it's early <laughs> for you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time and for sharing with us over here um, um, and, and, and facilitating on Miro. Really, really appreciate it. And uh, let's see, make sure that you, you can connect with, with, with Kuva on LinkedIn as well. So um, search search for Kuva there and, um, and, and make sure you connect. All right. So awesome. I am going to stop the share here. Thanks. Lewis. All right. Thanks everybody. I'm going to go ahead and close out the session tables. You know, if, if, uh, if there, if anybody wants to still chat, um, if the tables are active, you're welcome to go over there. Otherwise we'll see you tomorrow. We've got four sessions and, um, and we're looking forward to, uh, to all of that. All right. Bye, everybody. See you, everyone.